slavery makes the world go round. It's easy enough to see. Oh. Mm, can't I do something different now? Yeah, they just want this. Lots more of this. Exactly the same. But the same is starting to hurt my soul. Dylan is maybe not the worst offender as he is trying to be supportive, but he sort of pressures Da Vinci to study and become better, making her feel like she is not good enough. Dolly thinks that art is easy and not real work, making Da Vinci's efforts feel unappreciated, well, and Snow was the one who thinks that it doesn't matter that Da Vinci isn't getting any credit for her art as long as she gets paid, more or less telling her that she doesn't deserve the recognition. Let me know if you can relate to any of these things. You know, Emily had a problem like this. Now let me see if I can remember what she did. Oh yes. Oh yes. One summer night, Emily and Theodore were floating home together, just talking about this and that. Did I ever tell you about the time I was in Africa? Said Emily. No, replied Theodore. Oh, please do, Emily. Theodore loved talking with Emily. It felt so nice to talk with his friend. Well, began Emily, I was sent to Africa to bring back a ship who had broken her engine and suddenly a bright, shiny light streaked across the sky. What's that? said Emily. Shooting star, said Theodore. It's too big to be a star, gasped Emily. Look, said Theodore. The bright, shiny light suddenly seemed to fall right into the ocean not far from the big harbor. The tugs were silent for a long moment after that. Emily, said Theodore, finally, in a very quiet voice. That was the strangest thing. The tugs were gathered at the great ocean dock. The dispatcher was just giving out the jobs for the day when a very surprising visitor appeared. The dispatcher was the first to see her. Tugboats, he announced. We have a guest this morning. Constance, whispered George in a small voice, most unlike his usual booming self. Now, all the tugs had seen Constance the Coast Guard ship before, but no one had ever actually talked to her. She always seemed very serious and very important. Good morning, Constance, said the dispatcher. And then he turned to the tugs with a look that said, be on your best behavior. Good morning, Constance, the tugs said politely. Good morning, replied Constance briskly. And then she stopped before Emily. Emily, she said, I would like you to meet me at the harbor entrance later. I have a special job for you. Emily was surprised. She turned to the dispatcher to see if that was all right. That's fine, Emily, said the dispatcher. I will have another tugboat do your harbor job today. Uh, excuse me, Constance, said Emily, turning to Constance. Uh, wh what will we be doing? But Constance didn't answer Emily's question. She was already heading off. Well, that's the second strange thing that's happened lately, said Theodore quietly. First, that bright, shiny light last night, and now, this. The tugs couldn't stop talking about Constance. I wish Constance had told me what my special job is, said Emily. Constance is our Coast Guard, said Fodok in a serious voice. That means she's in charge of guarding our ocean. Maybe she's on a secret mission and needs you to help her. She probably needs you for something important. Still said Theodore quietly. She left before she could answer Emily's question. She doesn't seem very friendly. The others said nothing, but inside they all agreed with Theodore. Constance didn't seem very friendly. Emily caught up with Constance near the entrance to the harbor. Constance set off without a word, and Emily followed behind, feeling more and more puzzled. Excuse me, Constance, called Emily, trying to catch up. Where are we going? No time to talk, Emily, called Constance above the drum of her powerful Coast Guard engine. We have important work to do. Emily could see they were passing the last marker buoy in the harbor. So we're going out in the ocean, she said to herself. Emily forgot all about her questions. This will be like an adventure, she thought. 
Constance led Emily quite a ways along the coast, getting further and further from the harbor. Finally, Constance turned away from the shore and headed out towards the open ocean. Not too long after that, Constance slowed her engine and announced, It should be near here. Then she began searching the water. What should be near here? Are you looking for something? said Emily. What is it? I mean, would you like me to help you find it? Emily felt like she was going to burst from all the questions she'd been saving up inside her. I'll tell you about it later, said Constance quickly. But right now, I'm very busy. Just float quietly. Float quietly? It didn't seem fair to Emily. After all, she was only trying to help Constance. And suddenly, Emily saw something. It was floating in the water just ahead. Constance! Constance! she called. Constance headed over immediately. That is just a piece of driftwood, said Constance. It is not what I'm looking for. Well, maybe if you told me what to look for, Emily started to say. I already told you, interrupted Constance, to float quietly. Now I have a lot of work to do. Well, Emily was beginning to get very upset, and she could feel her engine getting hotter and hotter. I was only trying to help, she said quietly. But Constance was already searching again with that busy look of hers. Emily couldn't help agreeing with what Theodore had said. Constance really didn't seem very friendly. Not very friendly at all. Back in the harbor, Theodore and Hank were heading home from work. Theodore turned and gazed sadly toward the ocean. It's getting late, he said. We still haven't heard from Emily. She must be very busy with Constance, said Hank. Theodore was getting more and more concerned about Emily. But right now, it seemed there was nothing to be done but wait. Wait and worry about Emily. The sun was beginning to sail over the edge of the ocean, and Emily was still floating after Constance, who was still searching and searching. Hurry, said Constance. It'll be dark soon, and we must find it. Then Emily saw something floating in the water. Now, Emily didn't want to talk. She didn't want to upset Constance again. And maybe, thought Emily, this was just another piece of driftwood. But it didn't look like a piece of driftwood. It had brightly colored markings, and it was very big. Constance, called Emily. I see something. What is it, Emily, replied Constance. There's something floating in the water, replied Emily, staring towards the brightly marked thing. Constance headed over to the thing without a word. Then she called to Emily. You found it. Come and tie your tow line onto it. Emily floated over and saw that the brightly marked thing was really a rocket floating in the water. Oh, this rocket must have been the bright, shiny thing Theodore and I saw in the sky last night, Emily thought to herself. It tumbled down to Earth, all in flames. Where did it come from, Constance? asked Emily. Who does it belong to? I mean, where are we taking it? In all her excitement, Emily forgot about how upset she felt at Constance. All I have time to tell you, replied Constance, is that this rocket is very important. It's part of a spaceship, and I need you to help me get it back to the harbor as soon as we can. Emily had put the rocket on her deck and was following along behind Constance as fast as she could go. She's not friendly. She's not friendly. She's not friendly, Emily repeated to herself. They still had a long way to go, and the sun was almost down. Faster, Emily, called Constance. Now the rocket was heavy, and it was hard for Emily to carry. She wanted to slow down and catch her breath a little. Emily, it was Constance. The rocket is slipping off your deck. I tried to tie it on properly, Emily started to say. But you were in a big hurry and... No time to talk now, said Constance. Just tie the rocket back on, quickly. Well, Emily was tired of chasing after Constance and she was tired of carrying the heavy rocket. But most of all, she was tired of not being able to talk. Her face felt hot and she wanted to shout out loud. Slowly, she turned to face Constance. Why are you stopping? demanded Constance. We are late. I am not doing another thing till you say please, replied Emily in a steady voice. Well, Constance didn't say anything. I tried to tell you I didn't have time to tie the rocket on properly, but you were in a big hurry, Emily continued. And now you're upset with me because we're late. Well, maybe the other tugboats are afraid to talk to you, but I'm not. 
You're not very friendly. Well, it seemed you could hear the silence all the way back to the big harbor. Constance slowly turned to face Emily. Emily floated firmly in her place, but inside, everything seemed to be moving very fast. What would Constance say? Well, what Constance said was the most surprising thing. Do you really think I'm not friendly? said Constance. She sounded a little hurt. Well, Emily didn't say anything. I always have a lot of important work to do, continued Constance, getting her busy sounding voice back a little. I don't have time to be friendly. Being friendly doesn't take any time at all, replied Emily. And being friendly is important to me. Emily the Vigorous, said Constance, her engine rumbling. You are a very hard-headed young tugboat, and you are the first tugboat to ever talk back to me like this. Again, Emily didn't say anything. She looked Constance straight in the eye. You remind me of myself when I was younger, concluded Constance. I like you. You do, said Emily. She was so surprised she almost laughed out loud. I do, said Constance. And I'm glad you spoke up just now. I really don't mean to be unfriendly. Sometimes I, I am a bit bossy. Then she smiled and said, Now will you please get going? Well, Emily had to smile too. Okay, Constance, she said. Just let me pull this rocket back up on my deck. The sun had almost set, and Theodore had almost given up waiting for Emily to come home. When suddenly he saw her returning to the harbor with Constance. Theodore rushed out to greet his friend. Emily! Emily! I missed you! Where have you been? What's that on your deck? Emily glanced at Constance. She knew Constance was in a hurry. I I'll tell you all about it tomorrow, she whispered to Theodore. Suddenly Theodore realized he was floating right in front of Constance, blocking her way. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Constance, said Theodore nervously. But Emily is my friend and, and well, I missed her. Emily is my friend, too, replied Constance. And I think we might have a little time to talk about this rocket right now. Well, Constance began to tell the tugs about how the rocket came to land in the ocean outside the big harbor. And I'll tell you something really interesting. Somehow, as the tugs moved closer to listen to her story, Constance forgot all about being in a hurry or being important. All she could think of was how nice it felt to have new friends to talk to in the big harbor. Of course, Emily and Theodore felt the same way. You know, sometimes you just have to speak up when someone's upsetting you. No! Running away from your problems is not very brave. So Da Vinci makes a run for it, and does what many artists like to do in this situation. Vent art. That's illegal! Mm, like street art in across town. I'll just have to make a note of that. That's what you are. A regular lawbreaker. I shall report this. <laughs> Go to prison. You're breaking the law. You're under arrest. 